this time I'll call the marshal uh, the meeting of the Marshall City Council to order with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everyone here this evening. We have an agenda before us. We'll move to agenda item number two to consider that agenda. Are there any changes to that agenda other than what has been noted? If not, we'll operate under that agenda. We'll move to agenda item number three. Agenda item number three, consider the approval of the minutes of the regular council meeting that was held on May 24th and as well as a special meeting that was held on June 2nd as well as another special meeting that was held on June 7th so the council does have the minutes of those meetings are there any corrections if not is there a motion to approve so move motion by Craig I'll second seconded by Elaine uh, to approve the minutes as they have been presented we'll move to a vote Motion passes. Agenda item number four. Agenda item number four is a uh, public hearing. This is a public hearing on the uh, proposed vacation of the easement in the Western Mental Health Center edition. Uh, so we'll have the public hearing. Um, I'll ask um, Glenn Olson to conduct the public hearing. He'll make a brief uh, uh, presentation on the explanation of, of what the request is. Following that, we'll open up for public comment, then we'll close the public hearing, and then we'll take action. Glenn? Thank you, Mayor and Council. If we bring the uh, map up on the screen, we could. Uh, this, okay. Very good, thank you. The area that uh, is shown here is just south of East College Drive. East College Drive is right here. Here's Western Mental Health's edition. This is the area that they're, they're doing the construction on uh, currently. And this existing easement is petitioned to vacate uh, so that they could build on that property. There are no utilities in the area. All the utility companies have been contacted and they have no problem with that. Uh, in their new uh, layout of property, there was also a uh, uh, indication of new easements around the edges of the property. So we're recommending that, uh, that the request for vacation of utility easement be approved. Okay, thank you, Glenn. Um, does the council have any questions as part of this public hearing? Is there anyone here in the audience that is here to speak to this? If not, I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So move. Motion by Craig. Is there a second? Second. Second by Elaine. Discussion? Not. We'll move to a vote. If council members could use their microphones tonight, um, Council Member Conyers is having a hard time hearing with the fans. So okay. if you could use your microphones, please. Okay, the motion passes. Then now we'll take action. The next question then would be the resolution that would grant the petition for the vacation of the easement that was explained as part of the public hearing. Are there any questions about that resolution? If not, is there a motion? So move. Motion by Craig. Second. Seconded by David. Discussion? Glenn? <coughs> if there's no discussion, we'll move to a vote. Motion passes. Agenda item number five. Agenda item number five is consider the award of bids for the bituminous overlay on various uh, 
city streets, uh, the action would be the resolution that would accept the bid and award the contract. Glenn? Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, the next two items are kind of together in our in our budgeting process for overlays and uh, seal coats. And in this case, the first uh, item that you have on the agenda, we placed it uh, in this order because the first one is about $25,000 under our estimate. And the second one for the chip ceiling is about $25,000 over the estimate. So uh, we're, we'd like to keep them the way they are award them both as uh, indicated and that we will utilize the funds saved on the one for the additional payment on the other. So we would recommend um, approval of the uh, overlay um, with about the $25,000 savings on budget. Okay. Thank you. Uh, questions? Uh, and I have one other comment. Excuse me. Um, you can see we only received one bid. That probably will be typical coming up and we'll want to be uh, at least aware of what the going prices for asphalt are in the, in the region. Uh, it's the only supplier now is Dunnick Brothers and uh, taking over McLaughlin Schultz uh, operation. So uh, w we think these prices are okay, but it's something being we only received one bid we want you to be made aware of that and that we're monitoring that as well. Glenn, why do you think the, uh, the chip seal, you know, the, the seal coat and chips were that much higher? Is it a, did a change in materials or? No, it's, uh, we had two bidders and they were probably within dollars of each other for that. Uh, I think the bids were, uh, you know, around the, 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 uh, eight, Eighty thousand seventy five seventy nine five ninety nine. The other one was within hundreds of dollars of that. So when you get at least two bids, you can see that they're both bidding the same project and apples to apples and same oil and things like that. So um, I'm, I'm more comfortable with receiving two bids, even if they're far apart, then we can analyze what that difference is. When we only receive one bid like we did on the overlay, then you have to be a little more careful and you analyze that a little better for real cost. In the future with the bituminous work, is it gonna be, I mean, are we gonna be able to maybe push our, our request for bids out further to hopefully engage multiple bidders? They're, they're actually on a listserv exchange for, uh, for instance, uh, Central Specialties out of Alexandria has done work in Marshall before but they're busy and, uh, and it's a long ways for them to come and they kind of consider, are, are we gonna be competitive in that environment no, we have, knowing that we have that additional distance to go? Uh, there are also uh, contractors that may come from as far as east of Mankato, but there is a, a definite advantage, of course, of being local and our local contractor, at least in this case, uh, has been receptive to the local, the local environment, and not, in our opinion, overbid. Either. Okay. Is that it, outside bidder would still be kind of a captive customer to the supply of the actual asphalt? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> if not, you have the. Uh, recommendation and the resolution before you? I move the resolution accepting the bids and awarding the contract. There a second? Second. Second by David. Now discussion on the motion. Uh, Glenn? Yes. So there's lack of competition, therefore higher bids. Yep. Um, so in the future, we assume that this is going to be the same case, that from now on prices are going to be higher or could it we be a will more competitive have to, environment next year? It, we will have to monitor that process. The local contractor might be, you know, aware that um, that he should do a good job as a local owner in Marshall to do a good job for Marshall. So we have a regular conversation with the with the company, 
in what what their intents are, and that's his intent. The other thing that we'll you'll see is probably a more competitive relationship between asphalt and concrete. And uh, I know we are going to bid some major work next year for industrial uh, streets that that could have a real uh, comp competitive uh, pricing for concrete. Along along that line, do we do we allow or do we allow for the either asphalt or concrete when with when we let our bids? We we typically bid it one way or the other, but we will be bidding alternates uh, for some of our major industrial areas. Uh, usually, uh, you know, even in residential new construction, it can be it can be uh, looked at. Uh, they do in other communities as well. Uh, and if you get that competitive nature between the two, uh, there might be a tipping point. My, my concern is when there's not competition, the prices go higher. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we have to do something to increase competition. And I, um, mm -hmm. I, I like what Craig is saying about looking at concrete and other options here because, mm -hmm. again, once the, a bidder knows that there's not going to be competition, they can, they can increase the bid price because they know they're going to get it. So mm -hmm. we need to do something to increase competition. Mm -hmm. Hey, any other discussion on the motion? If not, we'll move to a vote on the resolution that would accept a bid, award the contract for bituminous overlays. Yeah, we'll move yeah. to a vote. As an abstention, he had to step out for a call. Mm -hmm. I can't do oh. Yep. Okay, that motion passed. So, agenda item number six uh, has already been explained, but this is to consider the uh, resolution that would accept a bid and award the contract for the bitumen of chip ceiling. Are there any additional? Questions or points you want to make, Glenn? No, thank you. I would entertain a motion for the bituminous chip ceiling on various city streets. Make the motion. Motion by Glenn. Second. Seconded by Craig. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Are you ready, Jane? You ready? Yeah, she has it all there. Yeah, that came up. So that motion passes. Okay, we'll move to agenda item number seven. Agenda item number seven is the consent agenda. We'll bring the items on the consent agenda up on the screen. So on the consent agenda this evening are Consider the approval of a temporary on sale intoxicating liquor license for Marshall Area Chamber of Commerce. Consider the approval of a temporary on sale liquor license for Marshall Area Chamber of Commerce for a second um, re request. Uh, introduction of the ordinance renaming the street from Merlin Lane to Camelot Avenue. Consider the approval of the 2017 regular city council dates, times, and locations. Consider the approval of a transient merchant license for TNT fireworks and consider the approval of the bills and the project payments. So is there any item on the consent agenda any member of the council wants to remove for separate discussion? If not, is there a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda? So move. Second. Motion by 
Craig, seconded by Elaine. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Motion passes. So then we'll move to the next agenda item beyond the consent, which is agenda item number 14. This is to consider the authorization to advertise for the bids for the concession building at the Schwann Regional Amateur uh, Sports Center. Glenn? Thank you, Mayor and Council. And this was just added today because we just got the uh, plans and specs approved, uh, final. Uh, we had received them a couple weeks ago. We made some um, comments on the review. So in the uh, notes that you have on your in, in your packet, it indicates uh, we would advertise for them as soon as we did the review of the plans. The review is complete, so we will be advertising yet this week for the uh, for for the bids, and would expect uh, them to be back. Uh, what's our next meeting? Uh, to it'll probably be uh, the following meeting uh, for recommendation. First meeting in July. Yeah. Okay. Questions. Not a move for the authorization to advertise for bids for the uh, Schwann's Regional Amateur Sports Center ball field concession building and dugouts. Motion by Craig. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Elaine. Discussion? Um, I noticed this item was added to the, today about 3 o'clock. Is that right? Is there a reason we didn't get it sooner? Or? Yes, we just received them today. We just we just got them probably at 11 o'clock this morning. I, I asked the same yeah. question, Glenn, this yeah. afternoon. Okay. And we weren't going to have it if we didn't receive it today, uh, the final plans. It's one of those where it's a couple years old now, and we had done this once before and rejected the bids for the foundations. So it, it's time now to get them complete. Other discussion on the motion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Motion passes. Agenda item number 15. Uh, consider the special event permit for the Sounds of Summer. Tom, do you have this? Mayor and council members, um, previously the city council had approved the um, uh, resolution declaring the Sounds of Summer for um, August 18th through August 21st. Um, the application before you tonight identifies the individuals, the organizations, and activities uh, that are involved at the Sound of Summer. Um, approval of the permit would allow the holder of the retail liquor license to um, serve liquor on the premises for this event. Um, the establishment identified at this point is the hitching post that would be serving the alcohol. So basically it's uh, approving the application that uh, was submitted for the different activities during the Sounds of Summer of August 18th through the 21st. And the applicant is and the parties and the activities are exactly the same as they have been in the previous years. That is correct. Any questions for Tom? Thank you, Tom. I would entertain a motion then uh, for the approval of the special event permit. I so move. Motion by Craig. And I'll second. Seconded by Elaine. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Motion passes. Agenda item number 16. Agenda item number 16, consider the approval of a temporary on-sale liquor license for Marshall Area Shrine Club. Are there any questions about this? If not, is there a motion to approve? So move. Motion by Craig. I'll second. Second by Elaine. Discussion? We'll move to a vote. Motion passes. To agenda item number 17, and Jane, would you put David back in? Agenda item number 17, uh, the uh, 
Swan's uh, Regional Amateur Sports Center. We have change orders to consider as part of the uh, um, total project. The, uh, the change orders are presented in two uh, actions. One that would be um, change orders that result in a con contract decrease and the other that result in a contract increase. Glenn? Thank you, Mayor and Council. You can see the separation. Each one has its own um, explanation, if you want to call it that. I'll skip right down to the increases, if I could, for a minute. And the, the majority of the increases have to do with the $64,000 of additional uh, work on the flooring. Uh, that same amount will be deducted from other uh, contractors' work. So even though it shows as a $64,000 increase, it'll, it'll be a net zero impact to the, to the project itself. Uh, if there's any other specific questions of either decreases or increases, I'd certainly try to answer them. Any questions for Glenn? Yeah, Glenn, as we go through some of these, and I know that we're getting close to the wrapping up and you know finishing out the punch mm -hmm. list, but I understand that there's a number of the change orders that have come forward that are the result of um, materials being delivered, equipment being delivered that are per the shop drawings, but then they don't fit mm -hmm. in the areas where they're supposed to go. So then they're moved somewhere else and there's change orders to make them fit somewhere else. And I understand that we're being charged for that. Mm -hmm. And my feeling is, is that if we've hired an engineer to make the drawings, the pieces are built per the shop drawings, and then they don't fit, we shouldn't be paying for that. Mm -hmm. And so if there's a way that we can pick those pieces out, because I would, I would approve change orders that we've agreed with and that have been because we've changed our mind or made decisions to add enhancements. But when we're paying the kind of money that we're paying for those services, both construction, oversight, and engineering, and they make a mistake, they need to step up and cover that. In response to that, I think at the previous meeting, I had asked Wink to develop a, a listing of, of change orders and changes to the project that categorized them into separate sections. Uh, design changes, design flaws, um, owner requested items or unforeseen circumstances. Uh, that happens sometimes when you, there's just no way you could come up with it. Or uh, code issues that weren't, it wasn't designed according to that. So they have, at least up to this point, and they're continuing to do this, they're m m uh, monitoring and putting a note as to what category the change order falls into. So, for instance, I'll, I'll use this one as a pretty simple example. The large change order for the flaw in the work, uh, that would certainly be covered under the contractor's liability and that worked its way out. Uh, where we had maybe a uh, precast panels that were delivered with certain size holes cut in them for windows and maybe the windows didn't match the holes. And the, and, the, and the holes were approved by shop drawing for the concrete manufacturer and then the window supplier ordered them that way and then they came out the wrong size. Well, you know, it's, it's a determination of whose fault it is uh, because the one contractor ordered his materials uh, to fit a certain shop drawing that was approved. So those had to be all reordered. Uh, now, were they manufactured prior to uh, noticing that? You know, sometimes there's an issue, of had they been made and sent, and then had to be sent back and redone, or hadn't they been made yet? And now it's just a process of getting a new window size for that opening. So it's, it's, it's really dependent upon when, when the item was found and what happened in the process. So. The, uh, Wink is providing a summary of each of those items. Um, so of this list, um, I can't tell you right now which ones will fall out where, but before final 
payments are made, that determination should be discussed. So what I'm hearing you say is that by approving some of this, we may actually be approving things that we're going to be coming back and asking for discounts on. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And we're going to know all those things before that final payment request comes in. Because as I understand it, and just a little bit of talk to some of the contractors and other people that are doing it, and I understand the complexity of 31 contracts. I mean, I yeah. know that if it's, it, this has been a big undertaking for a lot of people to try to keep all these track of all of this, but I don't want us to be in that position to where we're paying for those things. I understand how they happen, mm -hmm. and, and you know, I mean, I'm not blaming anybody, but yet, you know, one of our one of our our uh, consultants was very good about stepping up on some what mm -hmm. I consider pretty small items, but still, that's a big step. But I really expect that to continue because, as I understand it. There were a few things that are that are fairly significant. That yes, sir. Yeah, that that we sh we absolutely should not be paying for. Yeah. Okay. Most yeah. of the things though have been owner requests or unforeseen circumstances, right. but there are those items that uh, that's why we made that request. And you've already got an interim listing of things to at least I think the last meeting of what column they fit into. David? Given what you just said, Glenn, uh, what, what I believe I hear is an expectation that there will be a second round of calculation or building or adjustment here. And if that's the case, uh, do you see any harm in us uh, just tabling these matters until our next meeting? I, I do, especially in those large ones where they've already replaced that flooring, that 64000 I mean, that's something that's not costing us anything in the long run, but really should be paid to the contractor who put down the rubber flooring. Uh, that's good. just an example of one of the major items that, uh, you know, I, I could... I could read right down the list of the increases that and the steel work and I and well the other as we were looking at that no. the uh, um, the payments due to people are for actual services done I think Great. the accounting you're looking for and you're looking for Craig and what Glenn is working on is that summary by the construction manager and the architect. Yeah. So the person that, you know, delivered a product and that product is there, yeah. you know, that, that person deserves. should be paid. Yeah. Well, and, and, and part of it is, and the question's bigger than that, though, Mr. Mayor, the question is, is that some of this is on the architect. Exactly. Uh, and and yeah. so it it's, it's behooves him, and I, and I think I saw you know, Dave step up and, and do something, you mm -hmm. know, significant, and I expect that to continue. But again, and it's also possibly on the construction manager, but I don't know that. And, and the construction manager already took responsibility for one of the errors in the uh, change in elevation of the concrete floor in the main rink, where that piece, that, that piece of vinyl that had to be put in there as a, as a go-between when he pushed the bleachers back, he said, well, yeah, that was on me. So they have come forward and said, yeah, it's the responsibilities, but the pay payments to contractors, the contractors actually did the work. Mm -hmm. And you're, we're all here we talk, talking about responsibility. Well, and, and I'm fine with that, paying the, paying the contract. I just want to make sure that we have our day of reconciliation yep. at the very end so that we're not trying to get money back that we've already spent. When it comes down to the final time, and the buck stops. I mean, I'm I'm assuming we're going to pay those people who we've hired responsible to watch our interests are going to be the last ones paid. Yeah. Okay. Um, Glenn. Yes. So the idea is, if there's something wrong, and it's the contractor's fault, we're going to withhold money and not pay them at the end. Yes, because that typically we have a retainage of 5% of the contract. So that's a, quite a bit of money overall for, you know, in the whole $13.5 million. About 5% is being withheld from the contractors themselves. Then responsibility for, for cost is really a determination that, that's made later. Are, are you saying that 
for the, for the different contractors, all of them, we're retaining 5% from all of them until the whole thing is done. We're so none of the contractors are being paid in full until the end. It, all the contractors are being withheld 5% and now, until their contract is final. So for instance, I know that there's a final payment request on my desk uh, that came, just came in for one of the early, I can't remember if it was foundation requirements or, or, or contracts or steel contracts, but his contract, $500,000 worth, is done, done. Now, we've still got the retainage until we approve that payment. But they will be coming in piecemeal, not as one lump sum. Right. And, and my concern, so this one of these companies here, um, if they've completed their work and we have a contract increase and we go ahead and approve it and pay them, and we find out later that they were at fault, we have no money left. No, you're, you're talking retained, about contractor it's again. Paid out. Co contractor fault and responsibility of of the reason for that increase are two separate things. The the payments to the contractors are for work done. Work done, not not necessarily that contractor's fault. Okay, so if something was done by a contractor, I'll give you an example. If he supplied precast concrete panels, approved by shop drawings, and you supply them to us, generally we would pay for it, even if it was not what we wanted installed. It came to the job, let's say it was, it was n not used because of an issue with either design or some other reason. We still pay him for that, because he provided the material and installed it according to the plans and specifications and approved shop drawings. It's not his fault. So he gets paid for that. But in that case, if those two pieces don't line up and they were drawn up by the architect, uh -huh. then that's on the architect, right? Yes, but it's not on the contract right. and it won't be included in the 5% retainage from that contract. But we still have the ability to go back on the person that uh, didn't have the drawings fit. Correct. Okay. But not that contractor. He did what he was supposed to. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at that retainage because, like you said, that's different than having one large general contract with 5% retainage and you just kind of, okay, wherever that 5% is on $13 million, it doesn't really matter, does it? But when you have individual ones and you release the retainage and have a final estimate for one of the 31 contractors, they're done. We've approved their work, we paid them, we released the retainage, they're done. And that's why it's so important that that come from our, our, our construction manager that yes, that is 100% complete and we don't have any outstanding liability issues coming back to us. So you'll start seeing those now. Thank you, Clyde. Yep. Other questions? If not, we'll take the, the first action. Uh, that would be the change orders that result in a contract decrease. I would entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Motion by David. Is there a second? Second. Second by Craig. Discussion? We'll move to a vote. Motion passes, and now we'll take a, I'll entertain a motion on motion number two. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Motion by Craig, is there a second? Second for purposes of a second. Second by David. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Motion passes. Move on then to agenda item number 18. Agenda item number 18 is the uh, pump station construction at the Southwest Minnesota Amateur Sports. A change order to consider the final change order and the acknowledgement of the final pay request. Glenn. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, this project is complete. Um, it's, it's the project with this contractor is complete. 
the uh, only item left on the operation of the pump station is a different contractor for installation of the pumps themselves. They were on their way a week ago to install them and their lift truck broke down and so now they have to wait till their lift truck gets replaced. But we got a little rain between then and now and hopefully the pumps will be installed. Uh, but that's a different contract than this. So we would recommend payment be made for this contract. Questions? That is our motion for the approve the change order, the final change order with uh, H&W contract. That does result in a contract decrease. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Motion by Craig. Is there a second? Second. Second by David. Discussion? No discussion. We'll move to a vote. Motion passes. And then the second action would be the acknowledgement of the final pay request uh, in the amount of $12,338.64 to H&W Contracting, LLC. Motion by Elaine. Second. Seconded by Craig. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Motion passes. Agenda item number 19. Agenda item number 19 is Project Y62. This is the Highway 23 South Saratoga Street Reduced Conflict Intersection. Uh, we have a action to consider. That's the amendment to proposal number two for professional services agreement with SEH, the time extension. Glenn. Thank you, Mayor and Council. This time extension is a direct result of the contractor not completing the project by the completion date. So it's uh, an extension of time for them for doing the inspection services during the period of time until we uh, finalize the project. The project isn't complete as we speak. Uh, they still have painting to do on the bridge itself and staining of the of the uh, piers as well as some um, additional landscaping duties. So um, there is a significant penalty to the prime contractor for being overtime. Uh, it's prescribed in the specifications. Uh, currently we're over we're over a hundred thousand dollars in penalty but just so you know, we typically then will reduce that penalty based upon what it costs the city not to have it complete at the specified time. So this amount, whatever it is, this, this uh, amendment to their contract is for an hourly basis not to exceed $35,000. So, um, uh, that would be the amount that we would apply finally to the other the prime contractors um, penalties it may not be just these costs it may be some of our other costs or some of MnDOT's cost if they would have to come in and do additional work because of of the additional time taken but uh, for this change order this uh, whatever this amount ends up being will be included in that penalty. Thank you, Glenn. Questions? Uh, does this, I mean, does this involve time where they go to the site and observe what's going on or what? Yes. It involves both the time and uh, expenses to be here. Um, when, they, when they do a contract like this, don't they say, we're going to have so many visits during the, con during the construction project period or something isn't it number of visits or something that they put into the contract we can do that but in, in our contract it was actual time not to exceed so we have an ex exceedance of of that and so then then we would charge that as extra time but generally you can have it either specific number of inspections but in a large construction like this it's kind of as necessary to a max whether it's as necessary or a max, let's just say they had 10 visits or something uh, for this project, whether it takes the, the contractor longer to do the project or not, if they do the 10 visits, why would their fees go up? 
their fees are established up to the maximum during the period of time the contract requires them to be here. Once that time frame is up, then there needs to be an extension of their contract. So they ended up, they're ending up more visits? Oh more yes, uh, during the project, they were here every day the contractor was working. Towards the end of the project, when it's doing, let, let's say landscaping, when you're planting trees, they'll show up, get them started planting trees, and then go away, and then come back essentially when it's done, or a couple days later to check it out. So it, it's not that they're here every day when the majority of the bridge is open and occupied and operational. So now it's periodically, like they'll have to be here for the inspection of the painting, for instance. Okay, but well, the, the core of this, Glenn, is the delays in yeah. the timetable. Now, are the number of visits significantly greater because of that delay or would those visits have happened anyhow just a few months earlier? They would have been, they would have happened in the same time that other activities were going on. Okay. So for instance, this painting and staining that could have been done just after the concrete work was done, well, maybe that should have been done back then, but now they're doing it now. Okay. So, so these visits aren't they're extra visits. They are. They are extra visits because they didn't get it done okay. by last November. Yep. Had they gotten it done in the stated time frame, those visits would have occurred anyhow, or would have? These are the delay. Does did the delay cause a significant increase in the number of visits by SEH? Yes. All right. Thank Every you. visit that they've had since the completion date was an extra visit. But uh, one other question then, this would extend their period for inspection till July. Till completion. So they estimated that this $35,000 would be enough through completion knowing, and unless there's some catastrophe. And then the warranty period, and I'm really talking about the turf here, mm -hmm. um, that um, would extend beyond that for turf establishment successful. And that would be the city responsibility to inspect that after yes. the SEH is done. Yes, they won't do the the uh, warranty inspections. We we would do the warranty inspections typically. Okay. Now, if it was a structural issue, we'd want them to come back and take a look at it. But, but paint the, things like that. But uh, the failure we'll, of the turf turf we'll, establishment. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, I would entertain a motion um, for the amendment proposal number two for the to the professional services agreement for the construction engineering services. I so move. Motion by David. Second. Second by Craig. Discussion? If now no discussion, we'll move to a vote. Motion passes. Agenda item number 20. Agenda item number 20, uh, consider the land surveyor certificate of correction of the plat of the Liberty Park area. Glenn. Thank you, Mayor and Council. This is a real interesting one for those of you who are into, you know, site specifics and errors. Um, you can see on the map here, this is uh, east. First Street, and you can see a set of lots that um, this set of lots was all platted originally as 131 feet, I'll call it deep, line from east to west, 131 feet. Well, the issue became is when the adjacent area was platted, they came from a different direction. And, uh, and went up to, uh, the measurements came from a quarter quarter line. Well, as, you t as these lots went south, and if you could pan down to, towards the bottom end, right there, right there. By the time you get to this lot, uh, there's a significant difference between 
131 feet in the actual width of that lot. And this all came about when we were doing this uh, the street improvement project some years ago where uh, this person's garage was actually ended up being within the alley. And they said, well, gee whiz, I, the alley's always been over to the east there some, and we just kind of built it off the alley of a fair distance. Well, they kind of, that's why you see a, a couple of different uh, maps in your, is in your uh, packet is because this person then uh, not, not only checked out the plat itself, the actual dimensions, and then did a, a resurvey or a survey of their, of his property here on the corner. So this is a, uh, a uh, certificate of, co of a correction to the plat that's, that really significantly changes the lot dimensions of everybody on this whole block. And you can see even through Marshall Street, you can see there that, that there are platted lots through there. And I don't know if those were ever, you know, technically designated to the city of Marshall for street purposes. We're in the process of just making sure we check that out. No worries, because if it's been used as a street for 15 years or longer. Um, it, it's a public way, but that's what that's what came about when this property had an issue with location of the garage when we were doing this improvement district. Uh, we would certainly recommend approval of of this, and this will clear up a whole lot of issues when people want to sell their property. Property owners are aware of this. Uh, not all of them. But it it clarifies it for them that they now own all the way back to the alley line. So it doesn't take away property from anyone. It does actually, not take away from yeah. anyone. Qu question, Glenn. I'm yeah. trying to match your map with my map here. Okay. <laughs> and, and recognizing that you coming from two different directions. points of the compass are, are are problematic in this city. Nonetheless, mm -hmm. where in the world is East First Street? <laughs> I don't. Well, right. that, here, here's not what this says. Here's Marshall Street, and Elaine lives over here. Okay. Somewhere. Elaine, I see the boulevards, Glenn. I mean, this is the neighborhood, Morningside Heights, which developed right after World War One, hence the 1919 reference, but. If we're talking about streets running north to south that well, meet Marshall Street, they are Park High, Whitney, and Hill. Yes, next. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Do you so have something that shows something north there further? It's adjacent to Park High and Whitney. Okay, that's East College Drive there? Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Me and else and Willard Engel's place is right on the south end, if you know where Willard yeah, he's is. He's on Marshall Street, but my point is, Glenn, there, I don't recognize either by 20 years experience nor what this map shows that there's such okay. a thing as an East First Street that intersects, or in this case, dead ends into Marshall Street. And, and, that, and that's the original plot. Okay. Does that mean that we, we've been calling it something else for 100 years? It certainly could be. This is just what's, what's okay. shown on the plan. That's, I need to be, that's Glenn, why this block was. Glenn, before I can vote for this, I need to know what the street is in practical reality. Is it Park? It's not Park, but is it no. High or it must be High Street? I would street. say it's High Street because go down again. That's, it dead ends into. Yep. Into, um, I know the house there. The next two, the next one over to the east is a, Minnesota, right? Yes, yes. See, here's the here's the uh, street okay. with the boulevard in the middle. Okay, well, okay. That's Minnesota Street. Mm -hmm. In which case, if that's the case, Glenn, then we're talking about. Um, I don't think that's right, Craig, because the street, the so-called first street, is a dead it's end. Whitney, yeah, it's Whitney. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If we're talking about Whitney doesn't dead end, of, 
of those four north-south streets, the only one that has a T intersection with East Marshall is High Street. And Glenn, Glenn, your point is I on have, the original plat, it was called East First Street. That's correct. Okay. But I, I'll repeat, I can't vote for this until I know what I'm voting on in terms that are familiar to me and everyone else now living. So um, Liberty Park Edition, Okay, it's block three of Liberty Park Edition. And, and this is a correction to the plat based upon current conditions. So do you, do you want me to go check to see what that street name is? Could you? I, sure. I think the other part of the question is, if you're correcting the plat, should the, the name be corrected at the same time? Yeah. No, because that would have been taken care of in a different well, it wasn't taken care of with these materials. Of course, That's it should right, be corrected. But this is the correction to that plot. We're talking about this two is different a correction corrections. To, to Liberty Park uh, edition. I understand we've got the legal descriptions. I'm saying we need a street name to go with uh, it. I'm, I'm just saying that that Liberty Park edition, where the correction is being made, did not have the change to the street at that time. And this is a correction to a plot, not a replat. I understand. It's a correction to the Liberty Park edition with that street shown as First Street. By, by its World War I name. All right. Yes, not changed yet. So this is a corrective action, not, okay. not a replant. All right. I'll vote for this provided you can check what you have at the office and send Absolutely. me a note tomorrow just so we're all. Absolutely. Uh, and and okay. I can find out when the name of the street was changed as well. It'd be interesting to know that. Yes. Yeah. handy. Thank you. Sure will. All right. Elaine? Uh, well, I don't understand what First Street is now. Is that uh, considered would be A Street? No, no. I, I will I will get that and send out to all the council members what it was as East First Street and what it is today under a future uh, plat. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Other questions? Uh, could we look at Exhibit A a, a second? So on the, on the next page, the idea was that before, all of these were considered 131 yes. feet in length. Yes. From the top to the bottom. Yes. And then when we go to Exhibit B, further down, Exhibit B. Okay, that's a survey of that corner house I was talking right. about. Keep going. See, that change there, if you look at that, is 159.41 feet instead of 131 feet. While we're there, so what yeah. is the, the 131 that's still there? Uh, th that you'd have to go back to the previous plat. Okay, to the previous, right there. That would be lots 26 and 27, I believe. Right. Th they were all 131 platted. Right, so that's just to say that that's what they were before. That's what they were before, before this corrective plat. And then on the Exhibit B, then, it, it starts at, what, 130.28 feet? Uh-huh. And goes all the way to 100, is it 167? Keep, keep going down to the next one. I think there's another one after the individual. Yep. There. Keep going all the way to the bottom. There. Is it 167.92? Right. Keeping, so. keeping that East First Street where, where it's surveyed. So we're, we're sure that those are the dimensions based on the survey. That's correct. It came from the surveyor. And so every one of those lots has a different dimension than the... Every one is different. The north lot from the south lot of each lot changes dimension. So is that what they consider getting off on a tangent? That's off on a tangent there. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Related to that, the, the next yeah. sheet further down, now that sheet there and is exactly the same as the one that was in Exhibit A, right? That is exactly the same as the revised, not the 131. You could see right. where it says there 131 right. recorded. R, R means recorded. And then actual is 159.41 to the, 
to the uh, corrected plan. To the south, but 157 mm -hmm. to the north line. Correct. Right. And I guess my question was that this, this sheet here is both in Exhibit A and B. It's the same sheet. Yes. And, Even and though we, they have different We want you to just that, see it superimposed on the, on so the same. It, it's not like the other sheet was the before and this is the after. They're both after. These, this is after. Right. For sure. But it, it showed the before on his lot. It doesn't, it doesn't show the before on every lot because he had this specifically surveyed for his ownership only. I, you know, my concern was the, the Exhibit A is before. Yeah. But, but this with Exhibit A is after. So Exhibit A has both before yeah. and after in it. This has got both before and after in it. Whereas B has just after and after. Just after. Okay, so that Exhibit was what B. I was concerned about. Nope. It just seemed like a conflict there. Great. No, the, the after is the survey of the entire area with each shown, but this one shows his specific survey of before and after. Okay. Thank okay. you. Other questions? If not, um, good discussion. Oh, excuse me. There it's shown. It's High Street. Because this is after. Okay. I move the recommendation to approve the land surveyor certificate of correction to the plat. Motion by Craig. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by David. Discussion? We'll move to a vote. Motion passes. Agenda item number 21. I uh, consider the request of Southwest Minnesota State University for a homecoming parade Saturday, October 1st. 11 o'clock a.m. Questions? Is there a motion? So move. Second. Motion by Craig, seconded by David. Discussion? We'll move to a vote. Motion passes. Agenda item number 22. Agenda item number 22 is the street uh, department ventilation upgrades. We have a change order to consider. Glenn. Thank you, Mayor and Council. This one has to do with the changes to the detection panel and system for the street department for their uh, uh, alarm system. Uh, the, the direct current to the DC power supply uh, couldn't be repaired. Uh, so it needed to be replaced and uh, recommend approval of the change. Any questions? I move approval of the change order. Motion by Craig. Second. Seconded by David. Discussion? We'll move to a vote. Motion passes. Agenda item number 23. Uh, council uh, or commission board liaison reports um, uh, mine have not met however on their table this evening from the Southwest Regional Development Commission is the notice of their annual meeting that will be held in Marshall on Thursday July 14th if anyone's interested in attending the registration material is there for you Craig thank you mr. mayor uh, library board met uh, yesterday and we spent a, most of the time talking about um, the um, survey the opinion survey community survey that's going to be conducted by um, SMSU and had a long discussion about the details and some of the focus groups that had been interviewed to help develop the survey um, and ultimately approved to move forward the cost is more than we had originally talked about and that was a fair amount of discussion but I think that um, in consideration of what people's needs are a lot of talk about you know, changing hours and, and trying to get the library refocused into the community need um, it was I think pretty much the consensus of the group that we move forward with the with the uh, survey and, and hopefully help us with our strategic planning so we also talked about some budget things coming up um, we anticipate with the work that's been done to try to 
um, tune up and, and get everything functional in our HVAC unit. Um, there is hopefully going to be some savings in energy costs there um, and a few other things. But we're, we're starting to get into preliminary budget work now. We're going to be convening the budget committee, which I'm part of, along with uh, um, Commissioner Ritter. And uh, so, you know, we're going to be coming forward, I think, with, with some of the staffing review and changing in some of the positions. You know, we're definitely going to be coming in asking for some increase. I'm not sure exactly what that is. There's some preliminary numbers, and as we move forward, I'll, I'll keep the council posted on, on where we're at with that. And, um, but um, the whole function of the library and kind of the, the, the mood and the emotion there, it seems, I think, substantially improved. I'm very, very pleased with, um, with our new director, and uh, there will also be a uh, six-month review now, you know, for, for her for, for the uh, advancement. In, in the basically approval of probationary period. So um, things seem very positive there, moving, moving in the right direction. And uh, so hopefully that, that continues. And, and I like the fact that there's a lot of regional focus. We're really working with all of the libraries in Lyon County. And I think the relationship seems pretty solid with Plum Creek. So I think that's everything look, is looking a lot more positive than it was a year and a half ago. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, Greg, Clay. <laughs> the uh, Planning Commission hasn't met, but uh, Public Housing Commission met yesterday. I was attending a funeral in Northeast Iowa, so I wasn't able to attend the meeting. David? Airport Commission met last week, was not able to attend. Um, and I'll reserve the rest here to uh, individual items. Elaine? Then we'll move on to agenda item number 24. Agenda item number 24, uh, council member individual items. I'd, uh, the council does have the uh, uh, invitation to the annual employee picnic tomorrow evening. That's you're certainly invited to that. There's also on the table the, um, the transportation rail incident uh, preparedness and response training. And Craig, I'd actually like you to uh, sure you've been involved in that planning, so I'll uh, defer to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, I don't say very often that I'm pretty excited about something, but I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. This is a federal effort by a number of partners, um, primarily US EPA and all of the significant class one railroads in North America. Four of those serve Minnesota, Canadian National, Canadian Pacific, Union Pacific, and Burlington Northern Santa Fe. And they're all partners in this training effort. There have been two to date in the, in the nation, one in Toledo, Ohio, that had about 200 people attend. That was the first one out. And there was a lot of critique. These are eight hour and they're pretty intense, but um, it's, it's hard to tune one of these right out of the box to what your audience needs. The second one was over in southeastern Minnesota, mainly focused on um, the tribal communities. And, that got good feedback and there's been a lot of uh, modification and enhancement of the agenda and the presentations. Um, we'll be meeting in Sioux City, Iowa day after tomorrow with the uh, EPA uh, Kansas City and EPA Denver on a Siouxland sub area group that's kind of the focus group of this also to refine a little bit more of this. But we anticipate that this could be anywhere from 200 to 400 attendees um, depending on um, some other support that we can get. I did get word today from Homeland Security Emergency Management in Minnesota that they are going to be able to contribute funds to the Minnesota fire departments that have additional budget costs to send people here and they will be able to get reimbursed for those costs. So it's a zero budget impact which really helps training for fire departments. But I encourage the council members here and then also like the, the uh, county board and township members, especially that have the rail running through their their jurisdiction, this is a this is a training set that is going to talk about how the federal government, how the uh, federal regulators, how the state regulators, how the railroad, and the local units of government would all interface and interact should there be a disaster. Um, I was out of town last Friday night when the derailment happened in Cottonwood, so my esteemed colleague from Rochester was on call. 
and covered that incident until I returned back into the state on Sunday and then I took the incident over from him. That went very well, but all of our discussions, and we actually had a, a met, all the involved parties met last night at the Cottonwood Fire Hall and did a hot wash, an after action hot wash. And it's the consensus that this was a good exercise, thank God it wasn't crude oil or ethanol, okay? Significant deal changer, but um, I think it showed the fact that when you think everything's rolling smoothly, these things can happen and the parts of the rail that failed don't know what's going over it. It didn't decide, okay, this is safe, it's corn, we're gonna, we're gonna fall off the tracks. So um, I think this is very timely and I think it's important for anybody here that can go to that, it's, it's free of charge other than your time. Um, I think it's important that we all sit through this and, and it's going to show how unified command works and you're going to be able to understand what the different drivers are and I hopefully it will if it doesn't make your role clearer it will at least get an interest to where we can search that out and then we certainly have the ability to do follow-up training or focus things if there's a need but I'm pretty excited this is a big event for the Red Baron Arena and Expo it's a big thing for Marshall and, and it's a huge thing for Minnesota because our governor and our legislature has been very focused on rail and pipeline safety since the uh, uh, escalation of production of shale oil in North Dakota and the fact that a lot of that moves through Marshall you know we are one of the we are a significant route we are not the big route but we are a significant transport of crude oil and certainly of unit trains of ethanol and while the rail industry is pretty safe we know that things can happen and when it happens there's 110 cars so it's it's significant it's millions of gallons of product potentially involved and and it's important that we understand how we're going to interact together. So this training is, is excellent and I, I encourage everybody to enroll in it. Thank you, Greg. Yep, thank you. Anything else, Greg? Nope, thank you. Len? I have nothing. David? A couple of things, uh, along with most of you, uh, participated in the grand opening at the Merit Center what, about 10 days ago, impressive place. I think it's uh, uh, a real achievement that that's come to fruition and to bring a lot of good things to our community. Also had the opportunity along with the mayor to tour the, um, the facility in Ballaton um, developed by the Ralco company for a prototype of uh, shrimp, dry land shrimp manufacturing. Very exciting for our region as well. And a tasty lunch. Uh, participated in a conference call for the site selection committee for the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities to make a recommendation for their 2017 summer conference, which was earmarked for northern Minnesota and chiefly to take some notes to see what would put us in position to make a, uh, a winning bid to host it in 2018. So more on that when the time comes. And then uh, last Monday and Tuesday, I was in Washington along with some folks from Wilmer to talk to staffers and, and members of our congressional delegation about uh, their influence to, to to uh, get Highway 23 designated for a new program that's under the um, the recently passed transportation bill by Congress, which creates a or re re designates the National Freight Highway Network. And if this happens for Highway 23, it, it leverages the prospect of getting uh, more funding for the improvements we seek. Thank you, David. Um, I've just uh, received a couple more emails about uh, noise uh, around in, in the third ward and uh, haven't had a chance to really look into it because of uh, the high rain that we've been in, pro you know, in progress the last few weeks. Okay. And then I would just add um, two things. Thank you, Elaine. The, um, uh, as referred to earlier, the, uh, the opening uh, events at the Red Baron Arena and Expo Center was held uh, this past week on Tuesday, including the tours, the ribbon cutting, uh, official opening, I believe is scheduled for September 8th, but this was the uh, opening of the first events. There was nearly 3,000 people that actually went through on the tours, so tremendous interest. And it, it's, um, you know, as a construction management type of um, contract, we made that decision made that decision because it um, saved money. The, uh, it also put a lot more um, uh, work on the council and, you know, fleshing out some of the issues as we did this evening uh, because we're dealing with 34 different contracts. So 
the uh, but the result is actually you know something I think the, the community can and should be proud of. The um, League of Minnesota Cities has, will be holding their annual meeting this week. It actually started today. I'll be in attendance at that meeting tomorrow. So just for the one day though. Okay. With that, let's move then to the next agenda item, agenda item number 25. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'll just highlight one thing in your packets, the calendar. Um, there is an omission for uh, the June 28th meeting. There is a 430 Ways and Means Committee meeting scheduled right before our Council meeting. It's a review of the audit report. We had previously sent out the meeting notice, but it was neglected to place it inside the calendars. Um, the other update is um, tomorrow our Director of Community Services position will close. Um, we expect um, to follow a same or similar process that we did um, with our first round opening. So more details will be coming on that. And then we have some dates um, for our upcoming employee retirements. Um, for Harry Wylogge, please mark your calendars for July 15th. And Tom Melbrook, please mark your calendars for August 26th. More details on that will be forthcoming. Very good. Are you sleeping better or worse? <laughs> thank you, Sheila, and, and uh, special thanks to the extra effort you're uh, putting in as interim city administrator. Glenn? Uh, lots of projects still ongoing. The rain is slowing it up a little bit, but uh, we've had several comments already about the replacement of sidewalks adjacent to Main Street. Um, I think when that project is complete, uh, it will be a real improvement from for pedestrian walking from downtown to the uh, outlying areas. Um, that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Um, our city attorney couldn't be with us tonight, so we'll move to agenda item number 28, which is the pending agenda items. Any questions about the pending agenda items? If not, agenda item number 29. The information items, which are the building permits. Agenda item number 30, the upcoming meetings, and Sheila already noted that uh, the addition of the Ways and Means Committee, previously scheduled, not on the list. Agenda item number 31, is to consider adjourning. Is there any other business that come forward? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Motion by Craig. Second. Second by David to adjourn discussion. If not, we'll move to a vote. Motion passes. Perfect.